It's King's Gambit time again. Just recently I've seen quite a few really nice games and this one I enjoyed very much. Nepo is playing white, yeah? Pomnishi, who often plays the King's Gambit in rapid play events. He has a really good record with it and he's playing against David Paravian, very decent grandmaster. This was a recent online rapid game. And this is the perfect opportunity to talk about the King's Gambit because this week Chess Base have both my DVDs or downloads as you wish um, on sale so do check out the link you'll find it in the comments in the video description so yeah let's crack on with this game uh, Paravian takes the pawn and plays h6 now this has a very good reputation Black simply wants to play the pawn to g5 just to set up this strong pawn chain. There he goes. And, you know, White really has to think how to deal with this because it can block all the play on the F file if Black manages to retain that pawn on F4. So Nepo tackles this straight away by playing pawn to g3. And I think it's a, it's a very good idea. If black advances with g4, then knight e5, and you can see these pawns are being destabilized. And white is getting close to, to making a very swift breakthrough here. So Paravian, I think, plays very sensibly and exchanges off on g3. And you can see that's why he's played pawn to h6 to support the pawn on g5. Now, because this rook enters the game straight away, then black plays bishop g7 to guard the rook, so that has no effect now. Knight c3, knight c6, and bishop e3 from Nepo. In fact, there's a very interesting alternative. White can play d5 and push all the way to d6, and that's actually a very disruptive move. I rather like that, actually. But in any case, Nepo stuck to tried and tested uh, development with bishop e3. He's looking to castle queenside, which I think is really sensible. On the queenside, the king is very well protected. Queen d2. Bishop g4. Yeah, looks like a, a nice square for the bishop. Bishop e2 to defend the knight and castles queenside. So, yeah, I, I really like these variations where white manages to get the king to the queenside because it has really good protection from the pawns. And then white can use the h and f files without, um, without hesitation. Um, you know, the way is clear on the king side. There's no king there, basically. And black has something of a dilemma now. Although black's position feels quite secure, there's certainly no breakthrough here. It's a clear extra pawn. This structure is stable. Black's big question is, what do you do about the king? It can't stay in the middle. That's clear. Sooner or later, it'll it'll come, uh, come a cropper. Um, what about the queen side? And that feels like the place it should be heading. But that runs into huge trouble after this. And that creates space for white. And now a very direct move. Queen d4. This is incredibly strong. Actually quite a common theme in these kind of lines in the queen's gambit. And if b6 to stop the queen coming down, then bishop b5, and you can see that white is just gets in on the light squares. Okay, what about knight takes knight? Well, that's disastrous. The queen comes in, and this leads to a very rapid conclusion. This is checkmate straight away. So black has to take enormous care here and plays knight e7. And white is, is just ahead in development. And that gives the opportunity to actually disrupt black's position with this move d5 again. Still looks fine for black. 
you know, has, black has control over this square. But actually, bishop d4 is an awkward move. Exchanging off this excellent bishop, black still has a dilemma. What do you do about the king? Knight g6 looks, whoops, beg your pardon, knight g6 just played. Looks very reasonable to replace the bishop with the knight. But now, here's where Nepo plays very dynamically. It's just a very nice disruptive move. Bishop b5, obviously because of the pin, white has to play c6. And now the bishop comes all the way back. It's very clever. Black exchanges. And now Nepo throws in an exchange on c6 and recaptures. And that little flurry of exchanges means that it's still very difficult to find a secure home for the king. Where should it go? Well, castle's kingside will allow rook takes pawn, so that's impossible. Castle's queenside? Well, because of that exchange on c6, you can see it's obviously not the best place for the king. Maybe rook d3 to swing that rook across. Maybe knight a4 preparing perhaps rook d3. It's not completely secure, and I can understand why Paravian declined to castle queenside. Instead, he played king f8. And that feels like quite a sensible move because the rook remains protecting the h-pawn. The king comes across and it's protected by the knight as well. Reason. Nepo exchanges. And now clever idea. Queen f2. Why has he played that move? It's all about making room for this knight. It bounces round to e2, now if it can reach f5. Wow, what a square. As Kasparov always said, the knight on f5 is his favourite attacking piece against a castled king. Well, let's, let, let's just say a, a king on the king side. I mean, it would just look at all these sensitive squares. Fantastic piece. So Paravian decides c5. Got to stop it getting there. And now the knight bounces back and it's found another very promising square on d5. And don't forget there's a backward pawn. So I think Nepo at this stage has, well, all we can say is excellent compensation for the pawn. Black has a very nice knight on e5, which kind of holds things together. But still, you know, this is, this is not an easy position for black to play. White is very active. Rook b8. I think Nepo would very much like to put the knight back to e3, but be careful, there could be trouble on the queen side. So b3, good move. Just taking away this square, uh, blocking out the rook. Knight g4. Good move. Before this knight can bounce round, the knight comes to g4. And then h5. So, yeah, worst case, that knight can just be eliminated by black's knight. So Nepo leaves the knight on d5. Rook f1. Some press, pressure on the f-file. Well, that's what the king's gambit is about in so many different variations. Can you break open the f-file? And there are still weaknesses there because that pawn has advanced to g5, basically. f6, black seems solid enough. The queen goes back to d3, allowing the rook to come to f5, still using the weaknesses on the f-file. And then double, double rooks on the f-file. Rook e8, the rook comes across and puts some pressure on that e-pawn. So the battle is, is really in balance at the moment. Queen c3. So now there's a pin. And rook takes g5 check is threatened. So the king comes up the board. Still pretty secure behind that 
that fence of pawns on the king side and the knight helps. And there are one, two, three, four defenders of that pawn on f6. Four attackers as well, but four defenders, so black is solid enough. Now, how does white make progress from this position? I'd like you to have a think. How would you play if you were white in this position? White to play. Feels as though black is holding firm here. And it feels as though white has, has sort of extended, uh, developed to, to the sort of greatest extent. So what do you do next with white? Cheers, quick slurp of tea. I love Nepo's next move. Now remember, this is a rapid play game. So I think this is very impressive indeed. King b1. Just tucking the king away. The king is quite secure behind these pawns. You could argue maybe a little bit more secure than black's king. That's always important, particularly in rapid play games, but actually in normal classical chess. If you've got the safer king... The odds are in your favour. So it's partly about just tucking the king away, but also this puts black in a kind of tzugzvang. That's why I find this just fascinating. So however black plays here involves a slight compromise. You know, ideally, you'd, you'd want to exchange pieces actually with black to sort of relieve some of the pressure. Um, but it, it's, well, I mean, impossible to do that, really. But, you know, you want to hold your position um, and somehow create counterplay, but that's impossible, actually. Let's look at a, a few possible options. Well, you suppose you could move that pawn, let's say a6, but, well, white can still wait. Let's play a4. And black has to, to move a piece at this point. Okay, let's come back to the position after king b1. So that certainly the moving the a-pawn doesn't really help. Okay, what about just retreating here? Definitely no good. White picks up the exchange with a simple knight fork. What about moving the king? Well, it can't move back to g7 because white exploits the pin with rook takes g5. What about moving to h6? Well, in that case, f6 will drop, so you can't move the king. You don't want to play h4, because after the exchange, that will just open up the king. Can't move the knight back, because the f-pawn can be taken. So basically, well, okay, what, what, about, what, about moving, what about moving the rook? I mean, maybe you could move the rook, but it certainly doesn't achieve anything. And white can keep waiting. So black decides to take the pawn on e4. And this is, this is also very tricky. It's, it's easy for white to go wrong here. White can now take the pawn on f6. But knight takes f6 is actually a terrible mistake. Because black has a brilliant defence. And I'm sure Nepo saw this. Otherwise, I mean, actually knight takes f6 looks crushing. What is black's response here? Queen d4. Now this didn't happen. Nepo saw this. Queen d4 is superb. If the queens are exchanged, the pin is a problem. And after knight takes rook, in fact, black has a winning endgame here. Black's pawns on the, on the king side are just, they're, they're too strong. If knight g7, in fact, the knight is trapped. Now, I'm sure that Nepo saw all that, that after queen takes e4. Instead, he played rook takes pawn and broke in by sacrificing the exchange. That's pretty much all forced. And this is quite scary. An exposed king and it's attacked with queen and knight. Knight f6. 
Nasty. Queen attacked. Rook attacked. This pawn attacked. So how did Paravian defend? First of all, he gave a check. And then gave a second check. And the king is safe. Again, spot the difference. The king hidden, hides behind these pawns. Black's king rather exposed on h6. But at least by checking, the, the queen can no longer be taken. And it's found itself to, a good square in the middle of the board. And can help to defend the king. The rook, however, is attacked. Queen h7. Mate is threatened. So the rook heads into the corner. Well defended. So the rook defends h7 and it's no longer on prise. And now it's still so easy to go wrong. If queen takes pawn check, the king steps back, attacks the queen, and the knight is attacked. Basically the knight drops and black wins. So how should white play after this? Well, Nepo finds a really inspired move to, to keep things going. He plays g4. And now there is a threat to take on h5. And if pawn takes pawn, then of course knight takes g4. is actually checkmate. So Paravian plays h4. And now knight d7. Still very tricky. So how should black play here? Well, queen g7 was played. Paravian desperate to exchange queens. No doubt time pressure was involved because that allowed queen h5 checkmate. Very unfortunate, but that's why g4 was played. To open up this possibility. Let's go back. Instead of queen g7, well, queen f4 is possible, and then it should end in a draw by perpetual. Um, well, yeah, not, not king g8, because that's rather embarrassing, but instead king g6, and yeah, that will that will end in a draw. Um, I love that game, actually. Uh, why do I like it, in spite of this blunder at the end? Nepo kept piling on the pressure. You know, he found such clever ways. At the end, with this tricky move g4, with this exchange sacrifice, I thought king b1 was an inspired move. And going back to this position, this idea with d5... And and then bishop b5, just to disrupt black a little bit, just to open up the position a little bit, leading to this position where black has to be so careful. Um, Paravian defended very well for a time, but I'm afraid cracked at the end. Classic King's Gambit. If you want to know more about it, then do check out my two DVDs. There's a repertoire for white. And then you can learn more about strategy in Pablo 28. Lots of tactical ideas, lots of strategic ideas. They complement each other very well, these two DVDs or downloads if you prefer. They're on special offer this week at Chessbase. Thanks for watching.